Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, I'm Bruce. Uh, today what I'd like to talk about is f uh, six very influential and uh, very great debut albums from the late 1960s and um, I have all of these in my collection, some of them are duplicates so I'll show the copies I have. There are things that I've left out probably because I don't own them but you're welcome in the comments to drop down a few suggestions as to other 1960s debut albums which uh, you consider influential or great. Okay let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the uh, discs that I'm looking at uh, in chronological order going from the earliest obviously to the, to the last one. We moved from uh, about 66, 67 right up to 69. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's go. So the first one which I've selected, which was released on 4th of January, so very early in 1967, I believe it was recorded in 1966, was an album that's very popular. I think everyone knows this one, um, The Doors' debut. There we are, there's the back sleeve. Uh, quite a hit album. I think that some of their later albums proved even more successful. This has got some really great numbers on it like Break On Through um, you know, epic start to an album that and uh, obviously has the singles um, Light My Fire on there I think um, Jose Feliciano probably had the hit with it at the time but I think it, it was released it probably went to lower recesses of the British charts and um, may have charted in America it's got other great numbers like cover versions of Alabama Song by um, Veal and Brecht, Kurt Vile and Brecht and um, yeah uh, it ends with the epic The End which is which is a uh, about 10 minute 11 and a half minute um, it's quite a quite a um, quite a I don't really know how to describe it. It's it's kind of it's slight. It's a bit of a dirge, um, you know. It starts and builds well. I think it was used later in films like um, uh, what's it called, Apocalypse Now, the film about Vietnam. Anyway, um, so that's that's my first selection. Um, moving in chronologically to my second uh, choice, which is the debut album by Traffic called Mr Fantasy there's a number on there called Dear Mr Fantasy but that was their first album which was released on the 8th of December 1967 so the end of that year um, it's a gatefold sleeve I'll show you the gatefold here um, this one loads from the middle I've got two copies now this is an original um, mono pressing uh, let me switch it round and show you there so that's on the original Pink Island label um, and I also have Sorry, let me just load this in. These are very tricky to load in when they're done in the middle. So that's the that's the Mono Island original 67 press. I also have here um, a, I think, early 1980s press. Much the same thing, got the same cover. Label's a bit different, and this is stereo version of it. I haven't actually compared... Um, yeah, this is on the the dark blue... Island um, stereo uh, label from I think that's early 1980s. I haven't actually sonically compared the two. I must do that though sometime, you know, to check out the differences between mono and stereo. But um, there we are. There's that that one there. Now chronologically, I think the next one we move into from. Um, January the following year, 22nd, 1968, is the debut album just simply called The Eponymous Spirit. There we are. Um, 
and that um, features uh, fresh garbage, which I think was sampled probably in the early 2000s. Can't remember who by, um, but this is uh, this is the original UK press on CBS. Let me get the label up there for you. There it is. Uh, that's not a mono, that's a stereo. I'm not sure if that album was ever released in mono, but uh, it's a great album. Um, and uh, it also features, a, there's a track on here, an instrumental which caused um, a bit of consternation. The fourth track on there, I don't know whether you can see, is called Taurus and that has a remarkable resemblance to the intro to Stairway to Heaven by um, Led Zeppelin. Um, and I think there was some sort of court um, case about it. I don't think Spirit won, unfortunately, but it, it does bear a, a very strong resemblance to uh, Stairway to Heaven. OK, uh, let's move on to my... Uh, fourth choice which is from May the 28th 1968 Credence Clearwater Revival their debut album um, on Liberty Records I don't think mine is a first press but it's certainly an early press someone's left their name tag on there um, and yeah I think there was a blue label originally I think the black labels were the second press um, but this doesn't have any hits on it, but it's got some great covers like I Put a Spell on You, um, Susie Q, uh, that's got quite an epic. Um, yeah, it's 99 and a half, just won't do. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good good album. Um, they released, I think, about six albums within about a four year period. An amazing, um, you know, pr amazingly prolific band. Credence Clearwater Revival. Okay, now the next one, my second to last one today, is um, by Family, a great British, I think they're from Leicester, um, sort of blues rock, but then they, they, they morphed into a kind of psychedelic sound. Um, but this first album is quite extraordinary, Music in Doll's House. I believe that was the working title of the Beatles' White Album released in 68. So they had to change, just revert to that, you know, just the Beatles. Um, and this is an original uh, stereo press here on the steamboat. Um, oh, I think that was upside down. Normally up. That's the steamboat. Uh, yellow and green steamboat label reprise records uh i mean this is a fantastic album it's one of my favorites very weird hard to compare it to anyone really very unique voice with roger chapman singing he's got this slightly sort of guttural strangulated voice quite bluesy and heavy um but the music at times is, is really sort of um quite quite um uh, well, there's a use, I think they probably use a, um, not a harmonium, what's it called, a mellotron on here. And it's got, uh, it's got that 60s sound to it. Um, but some of it, they've got sort of vocal phasing effects, and etc. going on on this album. So there's a lot to it. It's quite a dense, complex album. Um, I, I love that back cover. It's absolutely great. Um, I do have here... A, this is a stereo later press I think this is 1970s just to show you the difference of the labels um, yeah this is a, a much thinner vinyl that one's almost like a, a flexi disc um, later press would be just the, the plain mustard label on reprise um, anyway so that's my penultimate choice there family music in a doll's house um, my last one, a uh, bit of a cheat because it's not truly a debut album. It is with the band 
given that name, but they had earlier in an early in incarnation produced an album, I think on DRAM Records, which I don't have. I think I might have a bootleg of it somewhere. Um, and they were called Jars, Jars and Frit. But from in 69, they unleashed this on the world. King Crimson's in, a court, in the Court of the Crimson King, uh, which is, you know, an epic, epic sleeve, epic album. Um, everything about it, you know, screams madness. Uh, it's a wonderful record. Again, lots of moods on this one. This is a later UK um, Polydor press. I don't have the original, which I think is would set you back at, at the good three figure price if you were to buy it now. Um, even more. I mean, I think these things go for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. If you can manage to lay your hands on the Pink Island originals. Anyway, this album's fantastic. Um, 21st Century Schizoid Man, again, I think that's been sampled left, right, and centre. Brilliant, uh, absolutely brilliant opening. And it's got this, it, it sort of fades into this quite soft, sort of pastoral tune called uh, I Talk to the Wind with soft, you know, it's mellow with flute and that on there. Um, I think there was an earlier version which I've heard online with uh, Judy Dibble, formerly of Fairport Convention, when they were still Giles, Giles and Fripp. So they'd recorded some of this, you know, with earlier takes, but an epic album. Um, there we are. Anyway, that's that one release date for that, I should have said, was on the October the 10th, 1969, that one. OK. Uh, and in, in case I didn't give you uh, family's release date that was on July the 19th 68 so the, the uh, preceding year uh, I hope you enjoyed those anyway let me know drop you know do subscribe drop down some comments about uh, my choices uh, and any others that you'd wish to add to them uh, anyway I'll keep this one short I'll see you again soon thanks for watching uh, and see you later bye